despite what the liberal NDP and the far left are trying to convince you of, it turns out that Russia is in fact not the largest purveyor of foreign interference into the Canadian democratic system. The country that is shouldn't surprise you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Four of the platforms were called to the Access of Information and Ethics Committee uh, to talk about this insistence by the federal government that they are the only ones that can protect the Canadian population from misinformation by censoring the Canadian population. And when these platforms came before the committee, they were asked very pointed and very direct questions. And one of those questions was, who's the largest, what's the largest source of this misinformation? And X and Meta both answered China. Now I'll let you hear from X right out of the gate. But before I do, and I had stopped doing this, but it turns out that many of you are being unsubscribed and that there are many of you who can't put up likes. So if you could just check that you're still subscribed, and if you would like to share this content, I would appreciate it. Uh, which foreign state is the most active in spreading or attempting to spread disinformation in Canada on your platform? Um, so from our experience over the past year, um, the spamflage campaign, which is linked to China, uh, has been the most active. Uh, in which it targeted dozens of MPs by falsely accusing these MPs of various ethical and criminal, criminal violations. Is that correct? That's what you're referring to? Yeah, so over the last year, uh, we've taken down about 60,000 accounts uh, linked to the spamflage operations. About 9,500 of those came from escalations from the rapid response mechanism. Uh, 9,000 that the rapid response mechanism brought to X's attention? That's correct. Okay. Now, those of you that may not be aware, the rapid response is an organization set up by the federal government and G7 at large. These are the guys that they're trying to convince you will keep you safe from dis and misinformation and election interference. I will read directly from the Canada.ca Global Affairs page. Rapid Response Mechanism Canada, Global Affairs Canada. Addressing challenges to democracy and the rules-based international order requires international cooperation. The G7 Rapid Response Mechanism, G7RRM, strengthens G7 coordination to identify and respond to foreign threats to democracies. Canada and other G7 democracies can better safeguard our democ democratic values and institutions by sharing information and analysis and identifying opportunities for coordinated response. Rapid Response Mechanism Canada, RRM Canada, is the permanent secretariat to the G7 RRM. It convenes G7RRM members and observers to drive the annual G7RRM action plan and coordinate G7 efforts. RRM Canada also monitors an, the digital information environment for foreign state-sponsored disinformation, including during general elections. It also supports Canada's international engagement on foreign state-sponsored disinformation. So these are the guys that, that the government is trusting to look after the disinformation and the election interference that might be coming in from China, who is the main player, though I am sure we can say with absolute certainty that there are other countries, whether they be Asian or Middle Eastern or European is, is of no consequence. What is important is that they are coming and that the government is not even able to stop Twitter accounts from doing so. However, the same question was posed to Meta. Now, Meta has people in the room, I believe like the high-ranking Canadian official representative, as well as an individual online who's the security specialist. So MP Cooper put the exact same question to the Meta platform on the Chinese misinformation and this uh, rapid response mechanism. Now, the individual in the room, the meta representative that was in the room, passed it off to the online meta representative who is actually the security analyst that came to this committee meeting. Her name is Dr. Lindsay Hundley, 
And here is her response to exactly the same question that was asked of X. We've removed thousands of accounts and pages after we were able to kind of connect different clusters of activity together as part of a single operation and were able to attribute that operation to individuals associated with Chinese law enforcement. So like many other China origin operations, we have not found evidence of Spamouflage getting significant, substantial engagement among authentic communities on our surfaces with zero or minimal engagement from real users. Uh, we've engaged a couple of times with the rapid response mechanism, um, including just yesterday about spamouflage activity. And I'm happy to report in that instance that they were found that we had been able to proactively remove the vast majority of activity that they were tracking. So here we can see that Meta is also way out in front of anything that the rapid response mechanism might be able to accomplish. And now we have the far left and the liberal and the NDP, the far left trying to say that they are going to do, they are going to censor you to protect you when the platform is doing much better. And the platform, not only is the platform doing it much better, they're doing it way out in front of, even if they found the same problem, Meta has already just like gotten rid of the problem, whereas the rapid response has simply just begun responding to it. And also they're not even responding to it, right? They're just seeing it and saying to the various platforms here, so really right now we're paying people to look at websites. Like that's all they're doing all day long is just watching websites. And honestly, for the amount of money that we're putting into this uh, rapid response mechanism, we, we could probably give 80% of it to the split it up among the platforms and they would, we would be better, like our money would be better spent. In addition, that would, would allow us to get them to track where, when, who, what, all of that kind of stuff. So annually when it came up on a budgetary as a line on a budget line that could be looked at, the committee could get stats and numbers from the various platforms on how many things had been shut down. It certainly would be a better use of money and the platforms wouldn't have the legislative authority to try and silence us whenever we said something that they didn't like. Whenever we talked about a, a, a policy or anything that the, the government didn't like because they're not trying to specifically remove censors right the government just wants to censor everybody nonetheless we see that both x and meta are out in front of the of the problem and that our government is not only not in front of the problem they are not even doing a sixth of the fines of the of the corrections and what is being found is not being engaged right so the, as she said you know very little zero interaction across our surfaces which is to say that nobody is clicking on it so we come back to how those two losses of, of uh, seats were really done when they the people were bussed in they were shipped in from other regions to to cast a vote all the more reason why we should not be permitting people to cast votes who are not in the room with the certified and verified identification despite, again, what the far left is insisting that anybody be able to vote anywhere from any country, which is, of course, how we how the only effective way that they were able to negatively impact the democratic system was by, of course, circumventing the democratic system. They shipped in people from other places and they were allowed to cast votes. Now we'll have them elaborate on the steps that the government is taking and how it's influencing the various platforms. Spamouflage uh, is consistent of thousands upon thousands of accounts, and they kind of drop in and out of different campaigns overall. Um, that being said, uh, when we engaged with the rapid response mechanism, we had already been tracking a lot of the activity that they had shared with us and had removed a lot of it. Although, of course, information sharing from government partners like these is really helpful for identifying anything that does get past our automated detection systems. It's now established that uh, it's now been established but during the 2021 election, the Beijing regime launched a sophisticated disinformation campaign using various social media platforms with the goal of defeating certain conservative candidates and re-electing Justin Trudeau. Uh, was Facebook contacted by the Prime Minister's Department to take down disinformation about then-conservative leader Aaron O'Toole? I can chime in here, Dr. Henley, uh, and, and you should comment as well. To my knowledge, uh, we were not contacted by anyone in the Privy Council office or Global Affairs. Uh, 
and that related as well to a more broadly the disinformation campaign by directed by Beijing targeting conservatives. Quick, quick response, please. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. So not only did the liberal government not find this information, they didn't try to stop this information when the former conservative party leader Aaron O'Toole was targeted by the exact same process, which puts Justin Trudeau uh, at the fore at the time, right? That was 2021. And, and of course, we know that the liberal party has professed, uh, uh, and Justin Trudeau specifically, has professed a lot of uh, admiration for the way that China conducts itself they've they've expressed a lot of admiration for the way china's policies work we can see that added to many of the liberal party uh, and the ndp party's uh, policies where they want to stop the discourse the public discourse they want to punish people for saying things online that they don't agree with and of course the real reason that we have to have freedom of speech the real reason that we have to sort of protect against the worst but allow for some of it to to pass through is because if we do not then people who are in power who are of uh, not of an ethical character will attempt to silence you for saying things that they don't want to hear this is going on all over the world as we speak and we can't allow that to permeate the only place where where freedom is supposed to be part of the bedrock of the country we can't permit people to terrify us into thinking that the only way we can solve the problem is to make legislation and make rules strict and strict and more and more con uh, constrictive. Because when you look at all of these same countries, they thrive on only selling their natural resources and then they have two classes of people, the people in power with all the money and then the rest of them. There's no middle class. Of course, the middle class is rooted wholeheartedly in the idea of freedom of speech because if you can't criticize those that are in power you can't adapt you can't evolve you can't scrutinize then you can't improve and which of course is why so many of these uh, countries collapse because they they simply stifle anyone who might make them look bad right it's not so much that the they make the improvement it's that they say it without the okay of the leader of the party who then wants to silence and censor. Just like we saw so many times during the, the Wednesday caucus meeting of the Liberal Party who, who are complaining about their leader who then refuses to give them the microphone to do that complaint. Refuses to even hear any of the scrutiny that might be coming toward him. Now, of course, the far left is trying to terrify you with your children by saying to you that somehow they're going to, you know, fall victim to all of the stuff. And as a, as such, because of your children, they should have the right to tell people that they're not allowed to criticize Justin Trudeau or Christia Freeland or Mark Carney or any of the individuals, you know, whether it be Harris or whether it be any of the people that, that are struggling to take the country back a thousand years to before the writing of the Magna Carta. I don't believe that that is a good way to go. I believe that free, freedom of speech is the only way that we can make progress. All of these individuals would only have the rights that they have. They can only give thanks to those rights because of the freedom of speech. Had they been suppressed at the time, had they not had the right to say them out loud, then they also would be talking about how freedom of speech is what they want to have and blah, blah, blah. But now that the shoe is on the other foot, they don't want anybody to scrutinize or criticize them, which is hypocritical in, in, the, in the least and malicious. However, it's a uh, telling situation that the platforms are way out in front. It's a telling situation that what the platforms are finding is not getting any engagement. And yet the liberal NDP far left is trying to say to you that it's somehow creeping, creeping, and creeping. Without casting the physical vote, there can be no alteration. And so by ensuring that the individual casting the vote is qualified to cast that vote, then we can limit the amount of exposure that foreign countries can influence our democratic systems. There are other methods that we should employ as Canadians, but I will wrap here and we will talk about those in another video. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.